Hello and welcome to another episode of Spotlight on Warsing. I'm your host, Christian, and here today we are here with Alexandra Jolson from the Planned Parenthood of the Mid-Hudson Valley. Welcome. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself in the uh, parent, Planned Parenthood? Yes. My name is Alexandra Jolson. I'm a health educator. I work at Planned Parenthood in Mid-Hudson Valley in Kingston. Um, I'm here to basically talk to you guys about um, different methods of birth control, but a little bit about anatomy too. And that's why I'm here to talk to you guys about that. Okay. Um, when do males get sperm cells? Hold on, before you get to that point, <laughs> Sorry. I just want to tell you a little bit about the wallet card real quick, because I know you want to jump right in, yeah. and it's so exciting, but yeah. I want to be able to tell you a little bit about Planned Parenthood. So, right. Planned Parenthood, why do people go to Planned Parenthood? People go there for STI testing, HIV testing, also pregnancy testing. A lot of people go there for different resources when it comes to sexual and reproductive health. We have five locations. We have one in Kingston. That's where I'm at. We also have a health center in Monticello. We also have a health center in um, Goshen, and we also have a health center in um, Newburgh and Poughkeepsie. So that's the five locations that we're at in Manhattan Valley. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about this wallet card. Um, basically, the wallet card right here comes in English and Spanish. It's a little blue box right here that if you have any questions about, like, why am I growing here in rare places, or why does it burn when I urinate, you will text this number right here, and it will give you all the information to be able to um, ask those questions someone like me will be on the other side it's confidential so you don't have to give any information but like the demographic like zip code and your race and after that you can ask whatever question you can ask this question maybe three o'clock in the morning seven o'clock in the evening or ten o'clock in the morning whatever you feel like asking those questions that section is right here the purple spot right here basically you can be able to make appointments you feel that you want to get on birth control, or you just want to see if you got pe um, pregnancy test. You want to see if you are pregnant, or say if you want to, for a male, want to just make sure that you know your anatomy is good, and you want to, you know, check out, make sure that you don't have no STIs or anything like that. You can go and make an appointment. The number is right here. It's eight four five five six two seventy eight zero zero. All right. And again, it shows you all the locations where we're located at and all the addresses at the bottom. So that's our wallet card. So, and it, you can use any major insurance. And if you don't have insurance, you can use the family planning benefit program and it'll be able to help you out so that you can get either free or low cost services. Okay. You want mm -hmm. questions though? Yeah, you can go right into the questions. All right. Uh, when do males get sperm cells? So males get sperm cells when do you think males get sperm cells? Uh, like beginning of puberty, like 10 or 11. All right, yes, you kind of own the money about it. Um, males go through puberty, and there's basically hormones that send chemicals to the brain and say, hey, body, it's time for change. And when it's body is time for change, basically you go through, you know, your voice gets deepened, you get testosterone, you get hair in different places, um, you also get a little bit of height, broader shoulders, that's what happens to males. But I kind of want to talk about a little bit on what happens to the male reproductive area. So, you want to take a trip with me? Sure. Okay. I'm going to show you a little picture of the male reproductive organs. So, I'm going to move over a little bit. All right. So, this right here is the male reproductive organs. Can you guys see? Good. All right, so let's talk about this path of the sperm. Sperms are located here. Sperm cells are developed here in the testes. Males have two of them. Most males yes. have two of them. They basically have to be kept at a certain temperature so that, you know, basically, you know, they can be able to get to the path to be able to get to the vagina and be able to fertilize with the egg. But this is where it's basically stored at. When it's time for ejaculation, it's covered by this area called the scrotum. The scrotum is like, uh, I want to say shockproof, or like the refrigerator, I kind of call it, where it basically keeps and protects the sperm so it can keep it at body heat. So when it gets too hot, the, um, the scrotum starts glow. When it gets too cold, it kind of shrivels up and gets closer to the body so that it can stay at the body temperature heat. Again, it's a, and also when you kick it, it protects it so that, you know, 
it doesn't, doesn't get destroyed. So that's what happens here in the scrotum area. So the next stop is kind of like the epididymis. The epididymis is where it mature. And this is where the sperm leaves the testes and goes into this area right here. It's a spaghetti-like coral kind of structure, and basically it's like getting ready for war. Mm -hmm. It's putting on its soldier vest and has getting ready and loaded so that, you know, it gets to fight that fight to get to, to the egg. Yeah. The next stop is the vast deferens. This is this long tube, and its only purpose is for transport. So just imagine like a transport tube and something shooting through that transport tube to, you know, basically come out the body. So it's called a vast deferens. Also, this is the area where guys will get their um, their vasectomy. So they will cut this area so, so that they basically can't have any children. So just want to put this up a little bit. So once it passed the vas deferens, it goes to this place. That the next stop is the seminal, um, seminal vesicle. Seminal vesicle is this where it gets the seminal fluids. So I just went faster, basically. You ever seen a picture of a sperm? Yeah. And it swims with a little tail, a little tadpole. Yeah. That's where it gets that fluid to swim faster. After it leaves the um, the um, seminal vesicle and passes the bladder, and once it passes the bladder, it goes to this thing called the prostate gland. The prostate gland is where it becomes semen. You heard that word before, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is where it becomes semen, and um, it gets that fluid so that it could be able to last longer. So, because it's acidic when it goes into the vagina, mm -hmm. so um, so it won't kill off or die. Mm -hmm. It gets this coating so it can be able to live longer. Now, if you if you could follow me, the prostate is at the bottom of the bladder, right? Mm -hmm. But you see this vast deferens. I mean, the vast deferens, and it goes like this. It passes, and it kind of like connects with the bladder. And this, right? Mm -hmm. So, how does the body know not to let any urine out, but to let ser um, sperm out, semen? How do you think? I don't know. Is the gland called the corpus gland, and the corpus gland basically tells the body, say, hey, like a faucet, kind of shut off the cold water mm -hmm. and turn on the hot water. So it turns off, basically it has a shut off, like where basically the urine can come through, and only the um, semen can pass. Before that process happens, it does a cleansing of this area, and that's where you call that pre-ejaculate fluid. So it's a mixture of sperm and urine and coming out the body, so it gets ready for that sperm. Because urine and sperm mix together, guess what happens? It kills off that sperm. So it, once it um, passes through the prostate gland, the sperm, the semen, it goes out the penis through the shaft and out through the penis and out the body and into the area where it's penetrating, which is most likely the vagina. You have another question for me? Yes. Uh, <laughs> so on the other side, when do females get egg cells? Ah, oh, great question. When do you think? Uh, around the same time as males or maybe before? Mmm, tricky. Male, I mean, females are born with their egg cells. Born with them. Billions and billions of eggs. They're located, okay, I want to kind of show you the, um, the path of the egg cell. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to use a different picture to show you because this one's better. Can you guys see? Good. All right, cool. So females are born with two ovaries. One, two. So... Billions and billions of eggs are located in these two ovaries. One is released each month. So I'm going to say for this purpose that the ovary is coming out, I mean the eggs are coming out this ovary, right? So when it's, um, time, for, when it's time for it to release, it will release, and that process is called what? I don't know. Ovulation! <laughs> <laughs> when the eggs are released, basically. So it goes through these things called, I'm going to go back to the other picture. Sorry. Oops, sorry. So right here, the two eggs, I mean two ovaries. So this side right here, we're gonna work with. So one egg's released from the ovaries. 
And you see these little finger-like kind of things right here? These are called fimbria. And basically it sweeps up the egg out the ovary. So it's like literally takes the egg out and put it into this thing called the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube is just like the vas deferens. Here is the same thing. It's like a transport tube for the eggs. So the egg travels all the way through this fallopian tube and it takes days. The small little egg takes days for it to um, go through the fallopian tube. And this is where most times the egg and the sperm meet. So most people think it happens here, but it happens in this fallopian tube. So that if the egg and the sperm never meet, it will keep traveling to this pear-like muscle shape right here called the uterus. So right here, the uterus is where the egg implants itself. And if it's fertilized, it basically will um, land on one of these walls. And this is covered by the uterine lining. The uterine lining basically is like a pillow for the egg so that it can like, you know, stay cushiony for nine months, <laughs> you know? That's exactly what I call it, <laughs> like a nice little pillow. <laughs> so if it does never um, fertilize with the sperm or the egg, um, I mean the egg never fertilizes with the sperm, then it, this uterine lining sheds. What do you think happens when it sheds? Uh, what is it called? A uh, period? Yes. So when a female or a person with a uterus is basically um, having a period, it's the uterine lining that's shedding. So it will shed and it will pass this area called the cervix. The cervix, I call it like the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. Nothing comes in and nothing will come out besides a baby. Right? Yeah. So it's really, really tiny for this, for anything to pass through this. So the cervix usually when it's time for baby, it will open up four centimeters, I mean 10 centimeters. Okay? 10 centimeters and it'll go through the cervix to this vagin vaginal canal, which we kind of <coughs> kind of know what that is. The vaginal canal is like basically like a tunnel that kind of lets, you know, the period out or, you know, and the baby that comes out, like the canal for the baby to come out, and things of that nature. So when it comes out, basically out the vaginal opening. And that's it. Okay. So that's your two um, male and a female anatomy. All right. So what is birth control and what does it prevent? So that is a great question. All right. So birth control, someone in the past, long time ago, said, hey, let's um, give let's find out methods to basically not have people when people are not ready to have a ch child let's figure out a way so that people can not have a child until they're ready so there is different types of birth control methods <coughs> i want to basically go over it with them with you is that okay so i'm showing you guys real quick um, the Planned Parenthood website is ppmhv.org, ppmhv.org, and basically you put that here in the search engine, and then you go to here, search, and you will put in birth control. So then I have all this different videos and different websites that will show you a lot when it comes to birth control. I'm going to show you this first. So birth control is a safe and easy way to prevent pre pregnancy. Only pregnancy. Some types of birth control can also help treat certain health problems or prevent other health benefits. So some people use it for like acne or heavy periods. So some people use birth controls for those reasons. Like making um, periods light, lighter or less painful, almost everybody uses birth control at some point in their life. Birth control isn't one size fit all. So just like, you know, trying on a pair of shoes, you're not, if you're not a size one, a size one won't fit you, but you're gonna try it on to see if size one fits you mm -hmm. until you figure out that maybe you're a size 10, right? Mm -hmm. There are lots of different birth control methods that work in different ways. That's why, that's where the expertise come in. So I will tell you a little bit about birth control. So at Pen Parenthood, we offer the implant and also we also offer the birth control patch, the birth control pill, the birth control shot, the birth control sponge, 
birth control, vaginal ring, the cervical cup, the diaphragm, condoms, female condoms. We have a whole bunch of fertility methods, the IUD, spermicide, and other um, vasectomies and tubal ligations and other birth control services. So you have a question? What is LARC? LARC, great question. What do you think it means? Uh, Take a shot at it. I don't know, it's, it's an acronym, right? For something. Mm -hmm. It is an acronym. Yeah. <laughs> so acronym stands for long acting reversible contraception. So basically, these methods that I'm about to tell you are long acting, so it lasts a long time, meaning years. And then they're reversible. So say if you say, hey, I don't like this method, or you're ready to get pregnant, or something of that nature, you can take it out, or you can not use it no more. And the contraception obviously is, you know, a method basically. All right. So I'm going to talk to you under the LARC is two types of um, two types of um, birth control. There is the implant and also there is the IUD. IUD stands for interuterine device. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to go to the IUD. Okay, so this is basically what the IUD looks like. It goes into the uterus, and basically um, there's two types. There's hormonal and non-hormonal. So you have the non-hormonal, basically it has no hormones, doesn't send no chemicals to the brain or anything like that, but it actually changes the, the, um, the environment of the uterus so that sperm and the egg would never meet. So someone came up with a great idea and said, hey, copper and sperm don't like each other. So when you put copper inside the uterus, basically kind of like freezes the, um, the sperm so that it can't go anywhere. It stays still. And it never, if it doesn't move, guess what happens? It never meets with the egg. Okay? I'm going to kind of show you a video real quick showing this what exactly what I'm talking about. IUD stands for intrauterine device, and it's one of the most effective kinds of birth control you can get. A doctor inserts a little IUD into your uterus, and then you're protected from pregnancy for years. IUDs are super convenient and mistake-proof. You get it, and forget it. Your IUD can be removed anytime you want, and your ability to get pregnant quickly returns. But IUDs don't prevent the spread of STDs, so use condoms along with the IUD to help protect yourself. There are a few kinds of IUDs. The Paragard IUD is hormone-free. It uses copper to prevent pregnancy and lasts for up to 12 years. The copper IUD also works really well as emergency contraception. It can prevent pregnancy if inserted up to five days after unprotected sex. Hormonal IUDs like Mirena, Kylena, Skyla, and Laletta use a hormone called progestin to prevent pregnancy. They last three to six years, depending on which one you get. The IUD has possible side effects, but they usually go away after a few months. They have lots of benefits too. Hormonal IUDs can ease cramps and make your periods lighter or even stop them completely. Want to get an IUD? Your nearest Planned Parenthood Health Center is here to help. All right, so again, there's two types of um, IUDs. Mm -hmm. There's hormonal and non-hormonal. So the hormonal one, I mean the non-hormonal one, like I said, is the power guard lasted for 12 years and it's surrounded by copper, so it changes the, the environment of the uterus. So basically, that's what it does for 12 years. So say at 12 years old, you get inserted an IUD, a non-hormonal one, and then you don't have to worry about it to 24. You don't have to worry about pregnancy at all. So that's um, that's that. Then you have not a hormone, hormonal one, which it basically sends chemicals to um, chemical signals to the brain and say, hey, do not release any eggs from the ovaries and kind of um, thins the uterine lining and thickens the mucus in the cervix. Remember that cervix? So that the sperm yeah. and the egg would never meet. Yeah. So that's what Mirena does. So um, if you use Mirena or the other types, those ones last for three to five years. And those are the ones that um, actually, you know, can make you have light periods or have no periods because it has hormones on it. Okay? All right. So that's your IUD. Kind of cool, right? Yeah. You have any questions on IUD? 
Um, yeah, we'll, all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. All right, so I'm going to show you the implant. So implants also is a hormonal method, basically, that is um, placed into your arm. And it's placed into your arm and kind of sends signals to the brain and says the same thing, where it basically don't release any eggs from the ovary, <coughs> it thins the uterine lining and thickens the mucus in the cervix so that the egg and the sperm will never meet. Um, once it's inserted, it does that job automatically. Um, it tells, um, basically, it lasts for four years. And, you know, people get that little incision in their arm, and then basically that's what happens. Uh, I'll show you a video of what it does. The birth control implant is one of the most effective kinds of birth control you can get. It's a tiny matchstick shaped rod that releases the hormone progestin to prevent pregnancy. A doctor inserts the implant under the skin in your upper arm, and that's it. You're protected from pregnancy for up to four years. The implant is super convenient and mistake proof. You get it and forget it. A doctor can remove your implant anytime you want and your ability to get pregnant quickly returns. The implant has possible side effects, but they usually go away in a few months. It has benefits too, like easing period cramps. The implant doesn't prevent the spread of STDs, so use a condom along with the implant to help protect yourself. Want to get the implant? Your nearest Planned Parenthood Health Center is here to help. Yeah. So again, it's four years, you put it inside your arm, it sends hormones, and basically that's what exactly what it does. Um, usually you don't see it, you just feel it is there. Um, it's a couple of days, it'll be like a little bit of bruising, especially if you're a little bit fair skin. And then after that, it's kind of like you don't even know it's there. Um, both those methods that I just finished telling you are 99% effective. And also, it's long accident, so it basically lasts for um, those many years. And if you ever want to take it out, you go take it out and automatically become pregnant. Again, both those methods you have to use a condom, so to prevent yourself from STIs and HIV, but it protects yourself from pregnancy. So what that's those two methods. Yeah. What are some side effects that they were uh, uh, alluding to? The side effects that they were talking about is basically that um, a lot of people will say, "Oh, I'm kind of you know bleeding more than you know expected, or I'm, I'm still spotting for a couple months." That's because it's sending hormones to your um, your brain, and it's for it to get adjusted, it has to go through that period, like that period of adjusting. Yeah. So it looks like like you know when you try on a brand new pair of shoes, yeah, you gotta break them in. Yeah, you gotta use them. Yeah, so that's exactly what your body's doing. So it's something foreign; it goes into your body. So yeah. you have to get used to it, and then once is you're used to it, it's automatically doing its job. But it's just your body's getting used to that because it's medication. Yeah, that makes so sense. So medication always has side effects. Yeah. All right. So those are the two. Okay, um, there is a uh, that's the lark, but there's other methods. You have um, you have uh, you have the the pill, and you have the um, the ring. You have the shot. Those are all hormonal methods, and the patch. These um four are ninety nine percent effective, and basically does the same thing. And told tell the ovaries, hey, don't lose any eggs. And it um, thins the uterine lining and also thickens the mucus so that um, mucus inside the cervix so that it never meets with the um, sperm. The egg and sperm will never meet. And when that, um, those methods basically, it's not like the um, lark ones where you kind of set it and forget it. These are basically, you had to kind of keep going with it. So like the shot is every three months. The pill is every day. So, and then the patch is um, once a week for three weeks and then the last week you don't put nothing on and then you kind of start all over again and the new ring you got to put it in for three weeks and then after that you got to put give yourself one week break and then go right back into it for another three weeks so those are kind of like those mistakes where people kind of forget to you know yeah you know take the pill when they need to take the pill or you know take change, change the patch when they change the patch so those have human error in it and that's why a lot of people become pregnant off those methods but they if they use right they're 99% effective. Who pays for these methods? So, who pays for them? Yeah. Insurance is doing that. <laughs> um, so, most of these methods are free um, with insurance. Or, you know, you can use a family plan and benefit program, which is Fitbit. And those are either in free or low-costing um, prices. I mean, low-costing if you have to pay out of pocket. So, if you go to Planned Parenthood or any 
um, health facility that provides um, birth control, usually they will work with you so that you won't have to pay it when you have to pay for um, when you go get birth control. But for teenagers, if you go to Planned Parenthood, it's free. That's helpful. Yes. Um, you have other methods too, um, but you know those are ones that people really don't use: diaphragm and um, sponge. And cervical cup, but you know, diaphragms come back because it's a gold green kind of thing. So, um, a lot of people are using those methods, but it's still out there if you decide to use those methods. Basically, it blocks the cervix so that you know the sperm will never meet with the egg because the sperm is kind of blocked by this object so that you know it won't get past the cervix. Cool, cool. So, you also got the female condom and you have um, the regular male condom, both of them are 98% effective. If you use right, you have to yeah. use it right. So you have to know all the steps, and that's gonna be another class. Don't worry, I'll teach you guys how to use a <laughs> condom one day in life. Um, but you know, basically, is a, a step process to using it properly so that you don't get pregnant. And guess what? what? With condoms, you're protecting yourself with HIV, STIs, and pregnancy. Besides abstinence, those are the only three. I mean, only way. Those are only two ways that you protect yourself from all three of those. And the number one 100% way of protecting yourself from pregnancy is what? Abstinence. Yes. Can you, do you know what abstinence is? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, it's basically to just wait until you're ready, I guess, or married or whatever, like that. Just basically, basically is no... To just not... Is no intercourse. Yeah. Basically <clears throat> no um, penetration of the mouth or anus or vagina so no vaginal oral or anal sex and that's basically abstinence so if you're not exchanging any of those fluids which is you know breast milk or blood or vaginal um fluids or semen or um rectal fluids those are the fluids that transmit um hiv and stis and then you have obviously sperm in a that yeah. makes a baby if you're not exchanging any of those things then you can't have um, any babies or any STIs or HIV. So basically, that's abstinence. Yeah. So it's again it's to each you it's its own when it comes to abstinence or what you define what abstinence is. But again, it's exchanging any of those fluids. Yeah. Okay. So that's what um, birth control and that's what I'm here to talk to you about. I hope you learned something um, about yeah. birth control and a little bit about anatomy. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? Okay, that's it. That's it. We're Planned good. Parenthood, 21 Grand Street. I'm Alexandra. You can always come visit me if you have any more questions. I'm always in the Ellenville area. I'm also doing a whole bunch of classes in the library. Also in BOCES, sometimes in the, um, the high school. And, you know, basically we're giving that information where you guys can learn more about how to protect yourself and practicing safe sex. Thank you for joining us. Also, thank you for watching this episode of uh, Spotlight and Warsing. We'll see you next time. Bye.